Welcome to this video about historic gold mining in Kern County, California. This PowerPoint video covers the Mojave Gold and Silver Mining District. It was prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 1801 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org. Buena Vista Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit institution. This video is presented for enjoyment of the public. Permission has been obtained to use graphics and photos in this presentation, and all graphics and photos are attributed to the appropriate source. You see a map of California's historic gold mines. Gold was discovered in the 1770s in the southeast part of the state. The 1848 Sutter's Mill Marshall gold discovery on the American River led to the gold rush. The gold rich belt south of the Marshall discovery became known as the Mother Lode, which is highlighted in red. The Mojave Desert discovery is marked by the 1894 star on the map. This slide highlights the major historic gold mining areas of Kern County. The Mojave District is a 70 square mile box defined by the California Division of Mines. This district, shaded light blue, has produced more than 1.48 million ounces of gold, second only to the Rand District. Most Mojave District mining operations ceased in 1942, but intermittent activity continues to today. The Golden Queen Mine is the lone active operation having returned to production in 2016. Kern County is the most gold productive county in California outside the mother load. The satellite image on the left shows the Mojave area outlined in yellow about 90 miles north of Los Angeles. The district has had four major areas of activity seen on the right. Standard Hill, Soledad Mountain, Middle Butte, and Tropico Hill, Willow Springs. Great quantities of silver occur with the gold and improve mining economics. But the emphasis of this video is gold production. Many travelers came to and through the Western Mojave before gold was found. Native Americans, the Kawaisu and Koso, traveled the area for thousands of years. Explorers, prospectors, stages, and 20 mule team freight haulers regularly stopped at Willow Springs, 18 miles southwest of the town of Mojave in the late 1800s. The Southern Pacific Railroad was responsible for creating the towns of Mojave and Rosamond in the 1870s. The photo shows a Mojave Desert prospector. Searching for gold and silver in the late 1800s was difficult in the desert. Lack of water and food, perpetual wind, cold winters, and unbearably hot summers made life challenging. Discoveries were made, though. None were as significant as the 1848 Marshall Gold Discovery or 1859 Comstock Load Silver Discovery. Close to present-day Mojave, minor placer gold discoveries were made in the El Paso Mountains and Red Rock Canyon areas during the 1860s, but most California desert mines were deserted by the mid-1860s. In the 1870s through 1890s, activities in financial markets in Washington greatly influenced capital availability and thus prospecting. Silver was king in the California desert between 1878 and 1893. However, gold reigned as king with the loss of silver price supports in 1893. A major technical improvement in the 1890s was the introduction of cyanide to recover gold from crushed ore. Still used today, cyanide was found to extract up to 96% of the gold, a far greater recovery than from mercury amalgamation. The Southern Pacific Railroad reached Mojave and Rosamond nearly 20 years before gold was discovered in the area. But with the arrival of the railroad, civilization set in. Pictured are Rosamond residents in front of a building that housed Rosamond's first hotel, general store, and post office. Notice three miners and their lady friends in their fine dress enjoying an afternoon on Rosamond Dry Lake. However, the activity of wind sailing gives you a clue as to how perpetually windy the Western Mojave Desert is. 
Like most gold discoveries, the Mojave District has an interesting history. Credit for the first discovery goes to George Bowers. Bowers disembarked from the train in Mojave in early 1894. He noticed Native Americans selling quartz crystals and inquired about where the crystals came from. Bowers soon returned to the area and discovered gold on March 8, 1894 on Standard Hill, just four miles south of Mojave. Pictured are travelers at the Mojave Depot in 1895, one year after the Bowers discovery. Bowers had a Sierra Nevada mining background and after discovering a gold-rich surface outcrop, staked claims around what would become the exposed treasure mine. Bowers quickly shipped two rail cars of ore from the surface diggings, worth $1,600 in gold and silver. Exposed treasure, only a half mile from the railroad, was the first of many underground mines in the Mojave District. The exposed treasure vein was developed by sinking an inclined shaft 900 feet into the mountain. The Desert Queen mine soon followed, and the Mojave Mining District was born in November 1896. This 1902 slide shows the 20 stamp exposed treasure mill and 60 ton cyanide gold recovery plant constructed in 1901. Key to the operation was an 18 mile water line built easterly from Oak Creek the same year. Ultimately, 70 to 85 percent of all gold produced on Standard Hill, $3.5 million, was from the exposed treasure vein. Standard Hill mining ceased in 1942, largely due to World War II limitation order L208, an order designed to save silver reserves. 150,000 ounces of gold and 500,000 ounces of silver were mined from Standard Hill by 1942. Standard Hill was revived in the 1980s. Billiton Minerals USA began exploring on Standard Hill. Mining occurred from 1987 to 1994. The average ore grade was eight one hundredths of an ounce of gold per ton of rock. Around the time of Bower's discovery, Ezra Hamilton found gold near Willow Springs, 14 miles south of Standard Hill. At what became the south end of the Mojave District, Hamilton was mining clay that was used to make brick and pipe at his plant in tiny Los Angeles. The Panic of 1893 meant a lull in the need for fire brick. Thus, Hamilton poked around his property and noticed flecks of gold about 1894. But it wasn't until 1896 that Hamilton found the rock outcrop where the gold came from. Later that year, Hamilton tapped that vein with the Lida mine named for his wife. Hamilton was quickly sued by Helen Frick, who claimed Hamilton bought out her stake in the clay mine for $500 just to tie up rights to the gold. However, he retained ownership of the mining claim. Hamilton had a varied, interesting life. He was born in 1833 in Illinois and moved permanently to California in 1870. He was an inventor, carpenter, farmer, brickmaker, politician, developer, prospector, and Union soldier. His gold ore made a stir at the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis. But his desire was to make enough money from the gold mine simply to operate the adjacent Willow Springs Resort. He sold the gold properties in 1908 and spent his remaining six years running the resort. Hamilton held dance contests where he awarded tiny gold bricks to the winning dancers. The irony of Hamilton's discovery was how many stagecoaches in the 1850s and 1860s carrying unaware gold prospectors had stopped at Willow Springs. Many prospectors were traveling to what turned out to be largely gold barren lands further north in the southern Sierra Nevada. But less than a mile away from Willow Springs, practically under their feet, they never knew about the riches on Tropico Hill. Hamilton mined Tropico Hill with his son. Their first shipment of 21 tons of ore netted $4,600. The two purchased mining machinery and two small stamp mills to process ore. In the first 12 years of the Lida mine, 
$260,000 or about 13,000 ounces of gold was produced from a narrow vein that carried one to five ounces of gold per ton of ore. The mine was acquired in 1909 by Tropico Mining and Milling Company. The mine name eventually changed from Lida Mine to Tropico Mine. In 1928, the Tropico Mine came under full ownership of brothers Clifford and Cecil Burton. In the 1930 photo, Clifford is on the right and Cecil on the left. During the Depression, the Burton brothers believed in the riches of the Mojave District, and they grub staked miners and leased claims to others to keep the area active. They expanded the Tropico Mill and extended the Tropico Mine drifts westward where they encountered the largest ore bodies ever found at the mine. The photo shows gold bullion produced at the Burton Brothers Tropico Mill in 1933. Like the Standard Hill Mines, Tropico was shut down by World War II in 1942. After the war, the mine operated on a small scale until 1956. Ultimately, between six and eight million dollars of gold and silver were produced there. After the mine closed for several years until the mid-1980s, Tropico functioned as a ghost town for tourists. This photo from 2007 shows the fenced-in abandoned Tropico property. It was used as a movie set for Ocean's 13, which starred George Clooney and Brad Pitt that same year. The largest ore bodies of the Mojave District were found on Soledad Mountain. Mining began there before 1897 on the north slope of the mountain at the Queen Esther, Karma, Echo, Elephant, and Gray Eagle mines. Soledad Mountain mines had significant underground workings. A Carmen mine photo shows a small open cut above an ore chute leading underground. Between 1894 and 1909, the Queen Esther produced about 62,000 ounces and the Karma produced 37,000 ounces of gold and significant volumes of silver. However, from 1909 to 1929, activity was minimal. The mill photo on top shows two workers tipping gold and silver bearing fractions of crushed ore into cyanide leach tanks. Gold and silver left the crushed rock and went into the cyanide solution. The gold and silver were later precipitated out of solution. In the 1930s, prospecting increased. This was due to one, a federally mandated increase in the price of gold from $20 an ounce to $35 an ounce. Two, efforts of the Burton brothers to sublease, grub stake, and do whatever was necessary to keep the Mojave District going during the depression. And three, discoveries of the rich Silver Queen and Golden Queen veins on Soledad Mountain. The Silver Queen vein was discovered by George Holmes in September of 1933. Photos show Holmes standing near the historic gold strike and Holmes with his wife Sue taken three years after the discovery. Some of the ore assayed a phenomenal 45 ounces of gold per ton of rock, hundreds of times richer than good gold ore of today. Holmes sawed off chunks of the discovery ore. One of those chunks is pictured. It is unclear how much of the gold color in the rock is actually due to iron sulfide, pyrite or pyrotite, rather than gold. Holmes sold his Soledad Mountain properties in January of 1935 for $3.17 million plus royalties, a huge sum during the Depression. These new rich veins led to the formation of the Golden Queen Mining Company in 1935. The newly named Golden Queen Mine included properties mined previously, such as the Karma, Queen Esther, Echo, and Gray Eagle Mines. Between 1936 and 1942, about 500,000 tons of ore was processed at Golden Queen, yielding 171,000 ounces of gold. The mine was shut down in 1942. As the price of gold rose in the 1980s, Golden Queen Mining Company assessed reactivating the mine on Soledad Mountain. The new operation was planned to be an open pit cyanide heap leach mine rather than one with extensive underground workings. After 30 years of planning, assessing, and permitting, 
the Soledad Mountain Project slash Golden Queen Mine opened in 2016. You can see the extensive Golden Queen operation footprint, past and present, on the 2020 satellite photo. The mine is expected to be active for 12 years, during which 225 million tons of rock will be mined. The permitted mining plan requires complete backfilling of mined rock into the open pit. It is projected that over 1 million ounces of gold and 12 million, million ounces of silver will be recovered. The ore is projected to average two one hundredths of an ounce of gold and 34 one hundredths of an ounce of silver per ton of rock. In 2016, 19,000 ounces of gold were mined. As of January 2020, the mine is still operating. All Middle Butte discoveries occurred between 1934 and 1937. The most significant was the Cactus, also called Cactus Queen, mine in 1934. Soon after this discovery, the property was purchased by Clifford Burton, who leased and later sold it to the Cactus Mines Company. Mining was underground, as you can see from the Wren head frame, photographed in 1997. From 1935 until 1942, more than 230,000 tons of ore yielded 35 one hundredths of an ounce of gold and 10 ounces of silver per ton of ore. In 1986, an open pit reactivation of the Cactus Queen mine occurred. Pictured is the open pit a few years after mining ceased. Finally crushed ore was processed via the cyanide heap leaching method. Mining occurred 1986 to 1992, though ore processing continued until 1996. About 400,000 ounces of gold and 3 million ounces of silver were recovered during this operation. Subsequent exploratory drilling discovered an additional gold resource, which may contain as much as 600,000 ounces of gold. This map shows generalized geology of the Mojave District. Gold and silver occur in somewhat vertical veins along faults and fractures in volcanic rock. The volcanic rock, primarily rhyolite, exists because of a volcanic episode that occurred 10 to 30 million years ago. Veins are filled with quartz and gold and silver precipitated from hot water that cooled as it rose through the Earth's crust. These are called hydrothermal deposits. The veins are generally 3 to 20 feet wide. The difficult to erode crystalline volcanic rock tends to form hills such as Soledad Mountain, Tropico Hill, and Middle Butte. The microcrystalline quartz rich veins are preferentially close to faulted, sheared, altered by hot fluid rhyolitic rock. Some veins occur in the granitic rock adjacent to the volcanic rock. The minerals within the rocks that contain gold and silver are serargerite, which is silver chloride, argentite, which is silver sulfide, and free gold. The richest ores usually contained two to five ounces of gold per ton of rock, but the average was three tenths to five tenths ounces of gold per ton of rock pre World War II. Most mining in the first half century at the Mojave District was underground. Since the 1980s, mining has been via open pit methods. What does the future hold for Mojave area mining? No one knows for sure, but it is unlikely that extensive underground operations will ever return. Thank you for viewing this video, and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. Look for other videos regarding Kern County's geology, and mineral history. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science in Bakersfield, California, or visit our website at www.buenavistamuseum.org.